Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Jarrah Road. Ah, uh, let me rephrase that. Um, hello everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And to the second part of Jarrah Road. Um, the first part we had a, a little bit of an introduction, thanks to Bill and Jim, um, to what could be happening in this baseboard or on this baseboard it's not uh, that big um, as you know it's only 300 mil wide and there's a lot to fit in this area so for those of you who have been following me on the community page we do have the drawings back they're always in safe hands right so here we are Let's have another look at this drawing because I've added something else which is the 1920s retro bus stops. Um, recent trip to Brighton I come across these bus stops and uh, they will be featured on the layout. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to doing them. So we've got a lot to do um, so the first thing I want to tackle is something I haven't tackled yet here at the Northeastern is this pillbox um, so let's make a start and here it is the pillbox that I intend to make um, this is the only photograph I have. Uh, I took this one myself. Um, I did manage to scout around the pillbox, but this side here was so overgrown, and the other side is in someone else's garden. Um, this is the door here, uh, which is totally covered up. You can't um, see into it at all. So I'm just guessing what's happening with the door here. But anyway, one good thing about this photograph is I can count the bricks. So these firing slots, I can get these quite accurate by counting the bricks down. Hence why I zoomed in on this to take this picture. So where have we got so far? drawn out the back for the door um, I haven't drawn a design for the door yet I'm gonna to have to look online and see what photographs are on there but I know from what I've seen there was no um, cutouts here at all all it was was a dirty great big board over this and it was just locked up um, but I did manage to see another slot adjacent to this around the opposite side of the photograph so we got uh, two slots and I managed to count the sides as well so we have a six-sided pillbox so counting the bricks again works out at 43 millimeters here and I've done these at 28 millimeters equal spaces and I've equally spaced the um, firing slots as it were and this is the door at the back so basically to get this measurement of 28 I've just halved it to 60, 65 and then put a center line on and then gone 14 mil either side and then cut that off at 43 and hence why we have uh, the six sided pillbox um, yes it's unusual to see these in brick they're normally concrete so when I saw it I thought yeah I haven't, had, I haven't made one of these so I thought I'd have a go at it so that's what we've got so far um, regarding the slots it's 15 mil opening uh, it's a 6 mil wide slot 3 mil um, aperture from top to bottom it's 11 millimeters deep 
works out exactly um, uh, 10 bricks um, so that works out quite well and obviously we haven't got dimension here but we've got it here at 28 mil so I shall progress a little bit further uh, which I have done and here is the base and I've already cut off the slopes as it were for the two sides I'm going to keep these because these will come in handy for gluing in the reinforcements for the walls for these two corners here so the next thing I want to do is to cut out a strip card which I shall glue onto here with the slots already in and with the aperture for the door I might have to stick a little bit of card on there for a doorstep to get in to the door but I can do that that's quite easily done a little bit of card glued on there that'd be fine so going back to the drawing again as you can see this is concrete concrete and this will be the brick sheeting which I'll just wrap around it should end up roughly around about 68 millimeters so here's the back uh, which will sit on there like so um, what I've done here is although it says 35 millimeters to the top edge I have made the card slightly taller to include the 4 mil. so what I can do now is cut the slope and I'm only going to cut this very rough there and there because the two roof parts will glue, glue in behind that and then we can chamfer to match the chamfer that we've got all there already so that is ready to go onto there we have now done the back and we've also done the base so the next thing we want to do is concentrate on the side wall um, so basically what we've got to do here is add these four dimensions together 43, 28, 28, 28 and 43 again but we've got to take 2 mil off was 43 so that would be 41 so it's 41 41 and 3 times 28 uh, which works out at a 166 millimeters long and same again with the height we've got to adjust the height because the walls are going to sit on the base so we've got to take 2 millimeters off the 35 so that would be 33 millimeters in height from the ground level to the apex of this uh, concrete slope and here's one I have done earlier so basically 41 millimeters find the center mark the center same with the 28 and the 41 here you mark the center and as you can see with this one I've just mark the center now I'm preparing to mark out for the slot now the slot as per drawing is six millimeters wide by three and a half millimeters in height so as you can see I've got to do the same here on the center line here here and here um, it looks complicated um, but, but really it ain't. it's all a question of marking out what you've got here so the 41 so that would work out both sides here and here then you've got your 328 in the middle so the next thing for me to do is to mark out the rest of these uh, portholes as it were here 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 and cut them out and then we can score the line here and then fold it round and hopefully it'll fit onto the base I am now cutting out the firing holes 
I'm cutting smack down the centre of the pencil marks. Now you see that uh, it is quite a small piece of card to cut out. Um, but I want to try and cut it out without um, leaving any score marks from the blade on the outside because you'll see it when you come to paint it that's for sure so I am putting the blade into each corner and pressing home and hopefully that will give us a sharp um, cut out a brand new blade is always advisable on a new build hopefully just take it out a little bit at a time try not to cause the front edge to flake because you want a nice sharp edge if you can You can also just flip it over and just take off any fur lines that are on the inside with your scalpel. Just clean up the edge. So now we're just scoring the card so we can fold the edges to make the shape of the pillbox. Hopefully it should be able to fold it like so and then that then will sit on there. So, yeah, looks like it's going to work. So, we shall glue the back on first. Make sure it's flush to the front or flush to the back edge, and make sure it's square. Leave that dry for a few minutes and then we'll put this piece on. Now, bear in mind we've had to cut these walls um, smaller. You have to allow for your dimensions here. So that originally was 14 mil. But if you take 2 mil off, that's 12, so that should be 12 mil from there to there. And then uh, that should all fit in there, and then that should then go back to being 14 millimeters. So what I'm doing now, I'm just trial and error at the minute, I'm um, putting this together. It seems to be hanging over at the front a little bit, which is okay, we can sort that out. We'll just trim a little bit more off the back edges, not much, just a millimetre. So that then can all go forward and then we can um, glue that in place permanently. But yeah, on the whole, um, yeah, it's worked out quite well. So I'm just taking half a millimetre off 
pHs. And hopefully they'll give us a better fit. It's not a lot, it's just it's just a fraction just to help to make that fit in there properly. So now that we've glued it together it's beginning to look like a pillbox. Uh, if you notice the back, remember we had left it uh, raised and I only just cut a little piece of the corner off and um, the reason for that being is once we put the top roof on this isn't the actual top roof this was cut the same as the base so this will be the top layer so this will actually sit on the top so there'll be another piece which I can slide the card in and draw around it and that will give us uh, an identical copy of what it is around there and it should leave us with a nice finish on this edge um, but yeah so what would happen is we'd have two pieces of two mil card which will then take that roof up to the top of this edge here and then the f to cap it off will be a little piece of sandpaper which will hide this edge so the next thing to do is the next layer of card which will go around again hence why I've marked it out completely so these edges here and here is where the card would meet and just expose this concrete firing hole like it is in the photographs Remember those small bits that we cut off the base earlier? Well, I've now glued them into the pillbox and that just helps um, strengthen the back wall. I don't think this side needs it because, uh, well, the actual shape is its strength, I think. Right, moving on to the side walls. Or the capping walls, as you call it. So what I'm doing is I'm just lining in up the card as you can see I've prescribed this so it matches the edge there because obviously it, it will grow now as it were the card will grow and this width this width across here is 43.5 and the center lines match up perfectly so that's what we've got to do now we've got to form form, form, form this to go around the pillbox and then we can start cutting out ready to receive the uh, brick paper so like I said edge to edge bring that line through and then we can score it and I bet you that's not 28 anymore no, it's 29. So, so when you put layers of card like this on, it just seems to grow in size. Now you remember um, what I had said about the pillbox finishing up at 68. And I think that's what will happen. So that's two. And that goes around there nice now. Just sort out for the next one. It's just there. Now I'm only taking the card to the back face because if you look in the photograph the brick is actually flush with this piece of concrete across here. Um, 
now you can see the brickwork is actually flush with the concrete. Right, we have marked out for the brick wall, as it were. We've come down 11 millimeters, and each one of these is 15 millimeters. So it's equally spaced on all the walls. Um, we've come in 14 mil, 15, and then that should be 14 again. Um, this one is just center to the 29 mil that we have. And uh, yeah, so we can now start cutting these out. Now we move on to adding the brick. So what I've done here is I have just temporarily placed that outer wall to the outside of the pillbox and then just folded this brick sheet over. So that's just um, a small gap there, about uh, half a millimetre. And then we can put that down and then we can start focusing on folding the brick sheet around the outer wall one crease at a time. So make sure you get the crease there and then just fold it. Nice and neat and tight. But keep checking each fold as you go around. So that it ends up center every time. And once you've got all the way around, remember we made a spare base where we can put that on the inside just to make sure that the folds and everything uh, lines up because as the card is going round, it's actually increasing in width as it goes round as well. But we want to make sure that, that the folds are in the right place before we can start marking out um, for the outer wall so we can start cutting the brick back, as it were. And when you come to the last fold, just check it around the pillbox. And when you come to the last fold, you just line up the brick paper with the door and then just cut it back. So there's the door edge. So we just take it back to that half of that brick there. Like so. And then we'll just cut that right off, all the way up to the top. And now that you're happy with the way that this folds around the outer skin and it fits quite neatly with the appeal box, we can now glue the two pieces together. So I'm just using PVA wood glue. To glue these pieces together. And once it's dry, we can cut out the spaces in between for the... So then we can cut these pieces out after the glue is dry. To make sure the creases get where they're supposed to go. And we shall leave that to dry. Once that's dry, we can still get in there with a the scalpel to cut those pieces out. So while the glue is drying, I thought we'd focus on the, the main door. Um, as you can see, I've already added the step. Um, it's 8mm by 16mm. I've just glued that on the end. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's the step, so we'll just put that to one side. Right, so now we're going to focus on the door. I've just cut this piece of card, which is 
18 millimeters by 35 millimeters and that'll just drop in there um, once the door has been drawn out um, what I'm going to do I'm just going to come down about 8 millimeters do a 3 millimeters again and what I'll do is where we've got a slot in the walls probably see it better here I'm going to put the same into the door but maybe not as big maybe just a 5 mil slot and then what I'll do then is, is I'll put another piece of card behind that so it looks like um, that would slide open from the inside um, for to have a look at what's going on outside so that's what I'm going to do there so this is what I've done with the door. I've cut out a 6mm by 3mm deep slot, stuck a card on the back, a little piece of card on the back, and what I've done is I've pressed with a black pen the actual aperture of the door, and as you can see it looks like I've pressed it in a few places, so it looks like it's, the door's been riveted together. Um, you can't see any hinges because I imagine the hinges would be on the inside. Um, so there you go. I think once that's painted in a dark grey, I think that will look quite neat. Hopefully those um, rivets that are same kind of pressed in with a black pen, hopefully will show up. If not, I can always press it again once the um, or press into the card again once it's painted, and then give it another coat. But, now is the ideal time to start painting the concrete pieces. Um, so this, I'm just applying the second coat now uh, because the first coat didn't cover up all my pencil lines where I'd marked out. So I'm just going over it again. There's no too much buildup of paint. See what I mean? That was the first coat, and you can still see the pencil lines through it. Now I've used this paint before as a concrete base, and then I've gone over with some white weathering powder just to lighten it up. So uh, we shall see. Now I'm not going to put any detail inside this because there's no point. I mean. In the era that this is um, going onto the layout for, which is some um, 20 plus years after the war, there wouldn't have been anything in it, though everything would have been stripped out, no doubt. But if you're doing one of these as a diorama and you want to put stuff in, maybe a light or um, other bits and pieces, now would be the time, ideal time to do it. Um, don't forget to put in some steps on the inside so they can actually um, fire out the firing holes. Um, I would have put some in. Now I have seen them in some of the old bunkers I've visited where you've got standing steps so to, to enable you to fire out. Right, so I've cut away the pieces on the brick paper and I'm now painting the card to represent a, uh, or resemble a brick colour. Uh, it's the right mixture of acrylic paints here. I'm using a red and a, a black um, just to get the colour right. Um, it, it's dark in there anyway with the shadows and that so you wouldn't see the, the brick colour I wouldn't have thought. So I just thought I'd do that first. And any excess paint will just wipe off. Doesn't seem to be too much, this is good. Right, so the other thing I'm gonna do while we've got this 
wrap around on the bill. Let's just paint these two edges here, this edge and this edge, because you'll you'll see that because it's where the door is. Just, just run that along there. Now that I've glued the two pieces together, it's beginning to look like a pillbox at last. And uh, painting it first really does help with the way it finishes it off, I think. I mean, trying to paint in there after it's all glued together, I think it would have been a bit uh, tricky. But yeah, so there it is. Almost there. Just got to do the roof. And you've probably noticed that I've painted the door a car key green. And um, you can see the rivets <laughs> they seem to have come through the paint. And it's just a matte paint, but uh, yeah. So yeah, quite like the look of that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just chamfering the edge. I've just come away about two millimeters and then I'm just chamfering it so I don't take too much off the edge. I just want to create a slope. And what I'll do then is, after that, this is done, I'll just um, put some super glue around the edges and then we can um, sand it down to meet the building. There you go, I'm just putting a little chamfer on it there. So it's just a case now of um, sanding these edges. And put a proper chamfer on. Now I've had to remake the roof again because remember what I said about the card growing every time you put a layer on? Well it happened again even though um, I wrapped it round and drew round it it's just uh, it just never seemed to have um, stuck in the right place but there you go, it's almost there. So I'll just put some soup glue around these edges and we can sand them down. Now you've probably seen me doing this before because it, um, it makes the edges go really rock hard. Um, but you just got to be careful that uh, you keep it at arm's length because of the fumes. Right, I have glued a piece of sandpaper onto the roof. It's uh, 280 grit. Um, yeah, just by using PVA and then super glue around the edges so I can sand it. And as you can see, I'm getting the shape. It's forming the, the slope. Um, like it is in the photograph. So uh, I'm using P80. It's quite a tough coarse sandpaper to uh, sand it down because it's tough as old boots this um, super glue. It really is tough. So let's, go, let's take that down now. be very careful that I don't touch the, the brickwork sheet so I'm, I'm going to end up leaving an edge on the corner but uh, I'm not going to worry about that yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's looking good I'll probably end up with a, a ridge between the two cards as well but uh, I don't think I'll be too bothered about that not when it's painted grey and then weathered we now have two coats of matte 240 on there but we're still not there yet so what I'm going to do I'm just going to um, use some matte white wipe it on there 
just to lighten it up a little bit and then wipe it off. I'm using paint for this. Um, the reason why I want to use paint rather than weathering powders is I want this to stick on, stay on that is. And uh, we'll finish it off with weathering powders once this is done. And this does seem to be working. We're getting rid of that grey a little bit and just lightening it up. I like the way it's gone in the joint. The joint in the card there. Now well, that's a lot better. I'll take it off the back edge too. Yeah, that's just lightened the concrete a little bit. Cause it's just a li it still looks like wet concrete at the moment. So what I'm doing now is I'm just adding some dark brown weathering powders. You see where the card is gone white on the edge. I just put the weathering powders into the card and it just hides any white pieces of paper and it just makes it look well realistic as well. Any bits where there's little bits of white card showing through. It's mainly on the creases and the folds. I'm now happy with the roof. Um, it's got lots of different textures to it. Um, so now it's time to add some green to give it, um, well, some uh, a natural, more natural look because. Uh, well, if it's been sitting around for 30 odd years, talking about 1930s to 1960s, so it would see that moment, it just looks too new. Looks like it was put up yesterday. So uh, yeah, we need to really tone that down now and get it looking like it's aged. So, a little bit of black on the step there. A little bit of brown as well. Yeah, so, so far I'm quite happy with this. Right, so here we go. I'm using the good old slimy grime dark green from AK Weathering Paints. So I've already dipped the brush into the paint, now I'm dipping it onto some tissue and then we're just going to dab it on there. And as you can see it's just, uh, it's just showing up the very fine grit. the sandpaper that's on the top. Quite like that already. A little bit around the edges. Uh, that's looking with it already. Can't quite tell on the camera. Places. Right, so I'm happy with the roof for now. May add some black later. And I'll just do a little bit on the, on the sides here, especially around the base. Like that. 
So what I'll do is when it comes to its final positioning on the layout, wherever it sits on the layout, I can add some um, green scatter um, like we have in the photograph there. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with this way this is going. So I've just finished it off with a little touch of black and just smeared it in and uh, yeah that uh, really sets that off quite well. So we have our first building for Jarrah Road and um, it was a fairly easy build, it's not like any of the complex buildings that I've done in the past. Um, if I would had to change anything again I think I would not have the back coming all the way up um, during the build I would have it the same height of the walls all the way around and that way I can make the roof fit a lot easier but uh, yeah so there we go the first building completed uh, the first tick in the box uh, but we don't want to get carried away with our buildings because um, we still got the track and the back scenes to do before we can start to do any more buildings so we're going to save that for next week so we're going to start ballasting and hopefully do the side walls next week so until then Enjoy your model railways, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.